The British Institute of Musculoskeletal Medicine was founded in 1992 as an amalgamation of two organisations which are medical charities already working in promoting the interest of musculoskeletal medicine. As a result of this, they have grown in size and number and are now producing courses on a regular basis. Each year we do short courses, workshops and a sequenced modular course and a number of doctors from all around the country come on these courses. BIM is interested in all forms of musculoskeletal medicine. Those used in sports medicine, rehabilitation medicine, those employed by physiotherapists, a variety of different injection techniques and needling techniques and including different manipulation styles. These methods and techniques are of interest to many different kinds of doctors and specialists, particularly those involved in sports and exercise medicine, rehabilitation medicine, rheumatology, orthopaedics, pain medicine and in particular GPs themselves. Broadly, musculoskeletal medicine is a diagnosis and treatment of all disorders of the muscles, bones and joints. Now the orthopaedic surgery is concerned with fractures, bone and joint trauma and serious pathology with bone. Rheumatology is interested in inflammatory disease of the joints and spine. This leaves a very large chunk of musculoskeletal pain and dysfunction which is not dealt with by the current specialities. These lead to a large amount of pain, distress and disability due to issues with the soft tissues such as the muscles, fascia, ligaments, tendons, discs and nerves which are not amenable to surgery or anti-inflammatory type of drugs or treatment. A very large part of this is spinal pain. The pain and distress to the individual can be very large, but more importantly, there is an enormous burden to the healthcare system as a whole. The NHS allocates four billion pounds a year to the diagnosis and treatment of musculoskeletal disorders. In 2010, the Global Burden of Disease study found that musculoskeletal problems rank higher than all other forms of disease which cause chronic disability. This is in terms of years lived with disability. I'd like to mention a new Masters of Science degree course we have just set up at Loughborough University in the National Centre for Sports and Exercise Medicine together with my colleague Dr Patrick Wheeler. BIM have been running a practical diploma in musculoskeletal medicine for many, many years. But with the evolving field in medical education, we thought the time was right to bring the course within a university structure to be able to develop it further. But to keep at its heart the practical assessment and management of musculoskeletal disease to teach our students skills to be able to take into their own workplace. This course is unique. It's part of Loughborough University, which in itself is part of the National Centre for Sport and Exercise Medicine. This is an Olympic legacy grant project funded out of the back of 2012 Olympic Games. The idea of bringing healthcare and academic work closer together for better integration and hopefully better delivery of care to NHS patients. The new facilities here at the National Centre included these large teaching clinical rooms as well as the large seminar rooms upstairs. And also with the National Centre being based here in Loughborough in the East Midlands, it's ideally suited for our students who are often based throughout the UK and even sometimes further afield. There are many different assessment and management tools that doctors and other clinicians can learn in the field of musculoskeletal medicine. Within my own practice, I'm the Head of Service for Sports Medicine in Leicester, and alongside a multidisciplinary team, we deliver care to patients with a wide range of conditions referred to us from across the East Midlands. My own clinical practice and uh, research experience is that of management of tendinopathies, whereas the other teaching members of the faculty have a wide range of other skills and interests, including things like spinal intervention, which can all be taught to students then take back into their own working environments. Musculoskeletal medicine, while not a medical specialty in its own right, has a large overlap with a wide range of other specialties. My own practice of sport and exercise medicine has a huge component of musculoskeletal care delivered within the NHS. But musculoskeletal problems also account for a large number of all primary care referrals and general practice. They also account for a large workload in a variety of specialties including occupational health, pain management, rehabilitation medicine and, and many more. The skills that doctors and other clinicians can learn on this course can then be applied within their own working environment to better care for the patients that they treat. 
By upskilling doctors in musculoskeletal medicine, patients will have access to a more reliable diagnosis at a much earlier stage in their care pathway and access to more targeted treatments. Also within this MSc in musculoskeletal medicine at Loughborough University, we're teaching doctors to praise evidence and their own practice, leading to continued improvement in patient care. The MSK physician has a wider medical background and training, is capable of making the differential diagnosis, has access to imaging and investigations, although I might add that a confident MSK physician will utilise these much less. In addition, they can prescribe and review medication, perform injections and a range of non-surgical interventions. Due to their background in psychosocial training, they will also have a broadly comprehensive approach to the patient. This could be described as being holistic. As a GP registrar, my eyes were open to the enthusiasm of the then senior partner at the practice. I was shown some techniques at that point, and then on qualifying as a GP, I was quite clearly out of my depth and I needed to have more skills. I therefore searched and found the BIM modular course. I subsequently have completed the eight modules and a one day injection roadshow. Ultimately, I have also completed the exit exam of the Diploma of Musculoskeletal Medicine. Patients do not arrive in general practice with clearly defined problems. For example, if a patient attends with a headache, could this be due to their raised blood pressure, stress they're feeling from a line manager at work, or potentially coming from their neck. The standard response from some of my less experienced GPs for MSK problems is to reach directly for the prescription pad or to potentially arrange inappropriate investigations. My patients will have a full assessment and targeted treatment options. For example, manual therapy, acupuncture, wet kneeling using lidocaine into myofascial trigger points and intraarticular steroid injections. My additional MSK training has allowed me to do other opportunities outside the practice. At present, I'm using those skills for my GP trainer role and also working for the local clinical commissioning group. The current NHS England Chief Executive, Simon Stevens, in his report in the late part of 2014, has suggested transforming primary care to absorb some of the workload from secondary care. The local commissioning groups, provider organisations and GP federations need to look at this and take on board the key aspects of that document. Strong clinical leadership is required to drive this forward for the best patient care. Here at the Blackberry Clinic we have an integrated approach to musculoskeletal healthcare. We have several musculoskeletal physicians who are upskilled in image guided spinal injections, peripheral injections and ultrasound guided injections. We also have a rehabilitation gymnasium and NHS contracts such as the AQP Physio Provider Service and Musculoskeletal and Pain Management Services whereby patients manage to get uh, early treatment with a low waiting list which may result in them being able to return to work more quickly. Two years ago we ran two one-day injection workshops for Hastings and Rother CCG and 17 GPs who had no previous experience enrolled and were able to demonstrate a reduction in secondary care referrals by 226 referrals which were saved over that six month period. Uh, this equated to a significant saving of perhaps between 15,000 and maybe as much as 100,000 pounds over the pursuing three years. Another project which was carried out in Edinburgh several years ago was uh, using a musculoskeletal physician who provided an MSK service in the hospital and he was able to demonstrate a third reduction in the costs compared to normal surgical pathway referral. And this was very significant and the quality of the outcomes was similar to previous experience. A major insurance company has also demonstrated a three million pound saving over the last three years by diverting referrals to musculoskeletal physicians as opposed to the usual orthopaedic referral route. 
by reducing the secondary care referrals and the amount of investigations such as MRI scans used, they've demonstrated a £1,000 saving per referral. An MSK doctor can and should be holistic in their approach. They have the advantage of a deep knowledge of the biomechanics of the system, the whole locomotor system. They will have had some training in psychology and psychiatry. They'll also be trained in the mechanisms that underpin chronic pain. Putting all these things together will enable them to take a truly comprehensive approach to the patient.